I was gifted two car show buggies by the RC Elf, and these are the kits I received. I am still blown away by this act of kindness and I enjoyed the builds but when it came to the driver details something was missing. So let's start by taking a look at the manual. Here we can see the driver is fully detailed by a sticker sheet and this includes a visor. But I'm sensing an underlying issue here. Is that sticker supposed to like hover over the face of the driver? It's just going to wrinkle up. Maybe that's why they left it off on this build. So let me show you how I completed the driver's helmet including a working visor. First of all, we need to put the helmet together and I like to use Tamiya Thin Cement. It gently melts the plastic so it can weld together and it's ideal for an application like this. Having a brush built into the lid makes applying this so easy. I used the cement on just one side of the helmet and then compressed it together to make it nice and tight. Then I kept the pressure on for a minute or so to let it do its work. I also brushed some cement over the seam once the helmet was all secure and in place. And the next step is to tidy this up and delete the seam line completely. But first, if you're getting any value from this video and you're enjoying it, please remember to hit the like button. Much appreciated. In order to delete the seam line, I'm going to use Novol Bumper Fix. The red tube is deactivated to harden the putty, but you still get plenty of time to work with it, so it's not a problem. Just mix it up until they're both combined, then you can apply it to the join line so we can get it deleted. It's always best to leave it a little bit proud, so what I've done is I've dabbed some on first, worked my way around, and then I've lightly tried to go back afterwards and feather it in a bit on the edges, just ready for sanding to make everything a slight bit easier. But this product is really good to work with and sands down well anyway. With the sharp edge of my Lexan offcut, I make sure I'm keeping the detailed lines as well as possible. This is something you need to be considerate of when you're sanding also. You only want to delete the seam line, not the detail. Something else I did was I actually damped my finger in some water and used that to feather in the edge a little bit. Of course that is going to slow down the dry time a little bit, but not by much. Now it's time for sanding and I went for some 1500 grit, as well as using one of those foam sanding pads. This was a slow and steady process, lightly sanding until I got it a bit flatter, then I was feeling it with my finger and I ran my nail over to see if there's any edge. But once you actually get a first coat of primer on, that will highlight any imperfections. And at that point, you can add a little bit more filler, sand it again, just make sure you're happy with the end result. It's a great feeling when the final coat of primer goes on, you don't see any imperfections. I put a bit of tape around the top of a cocktail stick, put it into the crash hat, and then I put it into some polystyrene and let it dry. Whilst that's drying and before I paint the helmet, I want to create this visor, so I find a bit of off-cut Lexan, apply the sticker to it and cut round it as neatly as I can. Then I tidied it up with some rough sandpaper bringing the edge closer to the sticker. And then I smoothed it off with the ultra fine foam pad. I left a fraction of Lexan proud of the sticker just to reduce any chance of peeling. Now the primer is dry, I taped the visor into position so I could drill some holes into the helmet. Now the helmet is ready for painting. I've masked up the face so I don't get any paint on that because I'm going to hand brush that one later. And after getting a couple of coats of red on the helmet, it looks fantastic. I let it sit for probably two hours before spraying on some lacquer. I did two coats. I left it till the following day and then I removed the face mask. It's dry enough to handle, but I always leave it a week before I put any decals on. That's because the fumes from the lacquer will continue to release for a few days after application. So best play it safe or you can ruin your decals. Oh no, I've got to paint the face of the driver. Proper squeaky bum time then. I dread this part because it normally ends up looking like this. This is not a process I can do recorded, trust me. The pressure's too much as it is. So I've already added the flesh colour, which took a couple of coats, and now I've masked it off so I can actually paint the black of the inside of the helmet. Using the same black paint, I decided to throw a couple of eyebrows on. Uh, <laughs> They're not exactly synced, but, you know, I can always correct it later. I honestly don't remember giving this much of a damn in the 80s. Did you? Let me know in the comments. So three days later, with the help of brushes and cocktail sticks, I think I've done all right. I can't be compared to any of those pros out there, but at least I'm going to have a visor to put over his face. And at high speed, he looks awesome. So let's fit this visor. We've already got the holes drilled. 
I'm going to attach it with a couple of M2 screws and here we have it. It definitely tidies things up and gives it the racing helmet look. If you like this video, you're going to want to click the link above. Thanks for watching.